Hello there. It's Joe here. Today we'll be creating this big abstract painting with acrylic paints. Abstract art is great for a number of reasons. There aren't a lot of rules, so you can put your own personal spin on it. And also, abstract paintings come together pretty quickly, even big ones like this. So let's get into it and see what we can come up with. For materials, we'll be using a 91 by 121 centimeter double thick canvas, a number 24 Taclon flat brush for detailing, a 50 millimeter wide Taclon flat brush to apply the varnish coat, some latex gloves to apply the majority of our paint, and some acrylic gloss medium to use as a finishing varnish. For paints, we'll be using turquoise, viridian and gold, all in the Dimension acrylic paint range, and raw sienna, burnt sienna, phthalo blue, titanium white and lamp black in the acrylic colour range. We suggest wearing a latex glove not only for the obvious reason of keeping the hands free of paint, but it also enables the glove to be clean as the paint can be easily wiped off with a paper towel, so excess colour contamination can be avoided. One of the most wonderful things about abstract painting is that it's so fluid and loose, so the way that you apply the paint can reflect this. In this case, we can thickly apply the paint directly from the tubes to get the painting going. With this painting, I wanted to evoke a stormy ocean beach sort of vibe. So I have a rough idea of what colours would portray this idea. I don't really have a firm idea of how I'm going to group them together though. So I'm just going to wing it and make it up as I go along. So it's all pretty intuitive. I'm thinking I want a hot spot in the middle of the canvas with surrounding light earthy tones that get warmer as we move to the edge of the canvas. I think to get some drama into the piece, I'm going to juxtapose some cooler, darker tones into the bottom of the canvas. Texture is just as important as balancing out tones with abstract art. So to get as much texture as possible, we can manually move the paint around our canvas. This way we can push and pull the paint around until we're happy. Also, because we're not using a brush, it is impossible to be precise with our paint application. But this totally works with creating abstracts as you get those haphazard, happy mistakes within the coat. The colours blend on the surface of the canvas organically as well, providing a pleasing, loose melding of colours. As I said before, although there are not a lot of rules with abstract art, due to its often chaotic and spontaneous appearance, there are, however, six key elements to bear in mind as you create the work. And they are shape, form, texture, value, line, and of course, color. For example, with shapes, the round circular central shape is the main focal point on the work and the warm earthy colours generate around that central shape. The warm earthy colours follow form around that circular central shape and the shapes below the circle are longish shapes that taper at each end but follow the form of the circular shape above them. Texture is created as we are using a lot of paint directly from the tube and we are moving that paint around with our hands which causes thick risen areas, thin sections and areas of rough broken edges. If we were using a flat brush, the coat would be much less textural and smoother. The way the colours roughly mix together on the canvas also creates texture. Regarding value, the central point is a bright white, with the values darkening as the colours move out to the edges of the canvas. The values below the light top half of the painting are a lot darker, with that area around the bottom very dark, almost black in tone. In this case, bright lines are integrated over the darker underlying tones and strengthen the composition by following the form of the circular central point. The final element is colour. As I said, the colours used for this painting were selected to create an earth and water feel to the painting. 
so I chose yellow ochre and siennas with green, turquoise to blues. These colours also complement each other nicely. If we were to get a bit theoretical, the warm yellow earthy tones sit across from the turquoise tones on the colour wheel and blue, turquoise and green are analogous to each other, which basically just means three colours that are next to each other on the colour wheel. If colours are chosen that clash with each other, the painting will not look pleasing to the viewer. So some thought needs to be given to those colours chosen. Free your inner artist and receive exclusive content, creative inspiration and new ideas delivered regularly straight to your inbox. To join, scroll to the bottom of our website and pop in your email. It's that easy. For more projects, check out the Create section on our website. Access a whole heap of content from projects to handy product demos. This is your new home of creativity and it's certainly worth a look. The painting to me feels kind of finished by this stage and if I keep going, I run the risk of overcooking it. So I let the coat dry overnight and varnish it with that acrylic gloss medium. Laying gloss over a colour brings out the depth and richness of it. The last step is to paint the edges with lamp black and voila! Well, we hope you enjoyed that. If you love getting crafty, be sure to join our Creative Connection community. For now, that's all from me. I hope you've had fun creating.